Hello, everyone. We are back with Cars Casually, and we're doing something fun. The guys have just messed around with the new Honda City hatchback in 1.5 RS mode, uh, which we like a lot. Uh, we love the city, and now we like the city hatch. Let's talk about it. Who was there? Chris and Nick. Yeah. What did you think? The dynamic duo. Uh... Well, I, I, I first want to start oh, with I'm really <laughs> the talking twins. <laughs> hey, if, if I'm the twin of Chris, at least I'm good looking. Uh... <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, get on with the car <laughs> next. Get on, get with, on the with the car. I, I first want to start with I'm really heart. I was really heartbroken with the news that the Honda Jazz <laughs> is uh, at least, you know, yeah. it's, it, it won't be coming back to the Philippines. Uh, so, at least for now. I'm really hoping, but at least for now, we won't be seeing the fourth gen Jazz here. So I'm really heartbroken about that. You but know, the Jazz mm. is a very beloved car that I don't think anyone hated. Like yeah. most yeah. of the cars, you'd have haters, but the Jazz, I rarely you, like encounter haters. You can't hate the, the Jazz yep, 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 throughout yep, the years. Yeah. yeah. yeah ever since and, the first gen. Yep. And fun fact: I, if I'm not mistaken, it's the most owned model in C Magazine. Like within, oh, really? with, yeah. I think there were five. They were five owners at one point. The Jazz. I mean, different yeah, year right. models, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But Which this new city hatchback <laughs> looks like it. Uh, it it's gonna be a pretty good replacement. Yeah, in fairness, as much as I love the Jazz. How do you compare the two? I mean, how how do they differ or what similarities? Chris, what do you think? Like uh, you were. What 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 are for you the big similarities and big differences? Um, it's it's different in a lot of ways, and yet it has one of the most important things about the Jazz, uh, which are the ULTR seats. ULTR seats. So yeah. this think of the city more of like in station wagon form, similar mm -hmm. to the Volkswagen um, Santana Santana GTS. Santana, Santana GTS. GTS. Yeah. So. Yeah. What they did is uh, they made the city a bit shorter, um, but the they increased the the room in the in the back at the back the of the seats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, okay. pretty much, besides some very very minor details such as the accents in inside their different colors, uh, it's pretty much exactly the same as the current city RS that we have. Um, <laughs> Some some instead of chrome or brushed aluminum, they went with piano black finish stuff like that. But the 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 biggest highlight for me really are the seats. The seats are um, the ULTR seats, which is mm -hmm. which was a highlight for the Jazz at the time when it came out. Very flexible seating configurations. Yes. Um, what were they again, Nix? The UL, uh, ULTR. Okay, utility, the, long, yeah, utility. tall, and refresh. Or I like yeah. for me, I like to call it romance. <laughs> oh god. Uh, okay. Um yeah, so <laughs> yeah. Hey, there that, was a that commercial that they were that they were featuring that the, there was a commercial that they were featuring it as romance. Anyway. That <laughs> makes the, the city hatchback uh, mm -hmm. a lot more usable and functional mm -hmm. than other the hatchbacks or station wagons yeah. in other segments or even in its own segment. Yeah. Um, so, the the seats the seat configuration is really a big deal. Um, you can store a whole bunch of stuff, uh, surfboards, potted plants. Mm, uh, those plantitos. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you can you can you can um, lie the the seat the front seats down so that it f it aligns perfectly flush with the back seats that are also down which is the refresh mode if you want to turn it into a virtual bed really mm -hmm. yeah um you can do and that i tested it it's actually nice on the back huh? in fairness okay you're talking about the ultr seats that are now on the city hatch right, right. yes right. that couldn't right. have been done on the sedan, sedan. That's the, okay yeah. and you tested these seats by lying down on them in the new city hatch right yeah. Okay, no, it's I have it on video. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Maybe we so don't want to like see that, but okay. Yeah, yeah. No, like that's... something you go like, like, like a trail, like it's yeah. not off road, but like, yeah, a, yeah. like a rough road, like, like soft road, road. Like, yeah, the back, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, you know those like spots, in, like you know the like ones in, in Subic, you know in Subic where like yeah. uh, it's like a park by the water. 
Like yeah. it's not off road by any means, but it's you know it's out of town. Yeah, you can use the city hall. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Dude, Ooh, it's really, really cool. cool. I mean, that's Although what I, I love about yeah. the jazz. It's here. In the city I hall. wouldn't. I wouldn't exactly say that it's a family car though, because uh, if you look at the rear seats, which you'll see in in our materials and Nix's video. Um, it's it's more suited to two passengers because the the middle part of the rear seats uh, has a ri it rises up a bit. Oh, I mean, okay. so it's not ideal. Yeah, it's yeah. not ideal. It's it it's more of like a, a bucket seat configuration for the left mm -hmm. and the right passenger with the with the middle yeah. seat raised up. Mm -hmm. a bit. So, I wouldn't exactly say it's it's great for families, but it's more suited to um a younger guy with an active lifestyle so if you like yeah. going to the beach like if you like Paolo. camping <laughs> <yeah>. like <Paolo. laughs> no uh so that, that's why part of me was really like really hope that uh they had an entry level model of the the city hatch because right uh, now it's only available as the rs mm, when i see okay. its potential for like people like me, people like Paolo, where it's a like that, that active lifestyle, but more affordable. Mm -hmm. Well, then if it if it if it's only coming in as the RS, which is basically the top model at the moment, that means that it's a premium. It's it's aimed yeah. at a premium market. Yeah. Right? Hopefully, so, just for now. Hopefully, just for now. Like we we don't know. Like uh, Honda's done this before, where they have a model, and then after a while, they have a kind of entry level model. We had which we've seen in the Civic. Remember, mm, yeah. they had. How do you compare, the by the way? RS. Uh, sorry. Uh, Go ahead. How do you compare the? No, no, sorry. How do you compare the the city hatch and the city sedan RSs? Okay, mechanically, so like in terms of driving feel, they're they're identical. So you're not if you're if you think that there's more sporty performance out of the hatchback, you're not gonna find it there. It's really it really okay. boils down to utility because yeah. I've asked people. Given the choice between the hatchback and the sedan, there are a good number of people still eyeing on the sedan because they love the bigger trunk. They love the trunk being separate. So there's there's really a huge market for that. And like we've yeah. seen, it really exists. So the, the two models are pretty much identical. Uh, look, no, yeah, the RS mechanically, spec. I'd say. Um, yeah. in, in other countries, they offer the 1.0 1. liter the uh, turbo. turbo. Yeah. As the engine, but here we're getting the same 1.5 uh, liter with the CVT transmission. Yeah, which uh, not not as not so surprising a move. Although we kind of wish they brought in the one liter turbo, <laughs> it would have been really cool. <laughs> yeah, to further to yeah. further distinguish it from the city uh, sedan. Uh, but it's okay. Um, besides that, it's it's shorter, um, significantly I like shorter. It. But, like. but what's what's interesting is that normally when you have uh, a station wagon or hatchback version of a sedan, you're compromising legroom to make room for the cargo in the back. But here, yeah. the legroom in the back is still virtually identical mm. between yeah. the sedan and a lot the of room, so, a lot of legroom. So that's that's great. Like no no compromises made there. So the distinction really is if you will make use of the ULTR seats, if you have. Um, the kind of cargo that utilizes um, hatchback space in the rear, then this is a nice option to consider. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you are, mm -hmm. if you value um, the kind of luggage that a trunk delivers, and you want it, to, you want to keep it separate from the cabin. Uh, maybe you carry smelly fish all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <laughs> no judgment. No then, judgment. <laughs> then this that the, the sedan is still a viable option. I mean, uh, so it's great that that Honda is offering these two. Uh, they, oh, they serve they serve yeah. very distinct distinct markets. I just remembered one more factor about the on the trunk of the sedan. It's because of trunk security. Because on the hatchback, like at the end of the day, you can still see the trunk more or less. Oh, but with, so there's no cover for the hatch. No, there is. But really? I, I I I remember. Uh, I asked when I was asking people whether they would get a hatchback or a sedan given the option. Some people find the trunk of a sedan more secure because you cannot mm, yeah, see what's well, inside. Yeah. yeah, and then you well, know, it's in the locked. sense that it's another thing to lock, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's you, one. You can lock it. Yes. Yeah. It's it's, it's another thing to lock. Other like if a, if it's a hatchback, you break into a car and you have access to the cargo in the rear. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it, it you can do that too with a sedan. It's just going to take a bit more work. So yeah, yeah. The, that's uh, our quick insight into this. Yeah. Into the. So basically, hatchback. the front, 
uh, the front end is the same, right? Yep. I think Space it's the, yeah. seat. Until yeah. the seat. All the way pillars. to the rear seat. Yeah. Is yeah. yeah same, actually, right? even the rear seat. Yeah, they're, they're so virtually the same. You don't, sacrifice, you don't sacrifice any rear seat space. No. You don't. Uh, the only difference is from the back of the rear seat Onwards. towards yeah. the well, because, and, because of, There are some interior changes too. Like the seats themselves are different in terms of the stitching and yeah. the design. And like but, I mentioned earlier, the, the accents that you find around the aircon vents, uh, instead of the brushed aluminum, you get the piano black finish, but the pretty much identical uh, in terms yeah. of fit and finish. Ar and arguably, arguably, they said that Argu but this is probably by like, the millimeter already. But arguably, they said the rear passenger space is slightly bigger on the on the hatchback, probably like the leg room and all. But arguably, yeah. sorry about yeah. that. We'd have to measure measure that ourselves. Yeah, but, that's why I said arguably. Yeah. But they, they, when you were there, they, that's what they like mentioned. But I'm like, hmm, we have to measure it to uh, to see if it's like uh, something that holds there, water. How could there be more space? Uh, because of the seats themselves, I think the seats of the sedan are thicker by nature. The ULTR seats, because like if oh, you see okay. the okay, I see, got it. Oh, uh, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, but okay. it, that uh, because I think for me that the target market for a car like this, it's kind of like the Honda Jazz. See, it's like the enthusiast's way of having an enthusiast car, but still practical. So like people like me and Paolo, we would like that sports. That, 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 using the term loosely, that sports car vibe, but still being practical. So it, I think it was, for me at least, it's a missed opportunity to have an entry-level model that's manual or like even automatic, diba? Because, I mean, what's the price of the, what's the price of the cheapest uh, Honda City? Let me check. Um, I think it's are there any manual? Uh, There's one. The entry level uh, S yes. have a manual for this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. It is at 848,000, the S manual. I would have loved to see a S variant for this one. But I, I also see the point of Honda Philippines opting not to have a manual for the city hatchback because um, maybe there's only a small, small percentage of consumers who would actually yeah. opt for that one. Mm -hmm. If they want a manual, the sedan is there for them. So it might not be optimal for the car company to have yeah. a manual for the yeah. hatchback as well. Mm. But yes. how about an entry-level not... automatic? <laughs> yeah, that would have mm. been a nice option. I, I'm, mm. sure yeah, the, yeah. I'm sure they'll, they're already considering that now and they might just bring oh, it in sure. the future. Come on, hold yeah. the plane. <laughs> but it's, yeah. not, it, it's not like, it's not an Audi RS6, guys, where you... <laughs> yeah, where you gonna, where, where you where you need a manual transmission to to enjoy it? I mean, it's it's not meant to do that. It's still a yeah. one point five liter. It's got it. I mean, it's it's a it's a CV. The CVT transmission does what it's supposed to do in terms of fuel economy and and yeah, comfort. Yeah, it does. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So it, the the Honda City sedan in itself is one of our favorites. It's it's a great car in the segment. One of one of the best in its class. And yeah. this just gives you another option of how to enjoy it. Um, yeah, maybe I find way. it better. I find it better than the sedan. Really? The ULT, no. the U, for me at least, the like owning a Jazz for like this long, for like a decade plus. Uh, uh, if I were, if a lot of people don't get me when I say like the Honda Jazz is all the space you need, mm. but when when you live with a car like the Jazz, it it you start to appreciate space given to you instead of like always looking for more space. It makes you more creative. I don't know why, but like all my jazz owner friends were so good when it comes to like cargo space. So is it a worthy successor to the jazz? Would you say that? Ooh, oh my God. <laughs> Francis with the hard I'm a jazz owner. <laughs> ah! Is it? Is it? <laughs> oh no. Uh, it's a tough one, Francis. Give me a minute. <laughs> I guess okay. Uh, in terms of utility, I'd say yes. But the, honestly, the Honda Jazz really has like a, such a lovable flair to it. Uh, like what Paul was saying a while ago, it's hard to look for a jazz hater, and it's mm. easy to look it for a jazz a style lover. All its own. Yeah, it a style all its own. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know the seeing the 
the Tokyo Motor Show photo. So was it two years ago? Well, two years ago yeah. of the fourth generation uh, yeah, chance. Fourth gen almost, chance. Yep. almost two years yep. ago. Almost yeah. Two years. It, it it was something I was really inter- interested to see what it brings to the table. Because when the first Jazz came, it was it was sort of like a small MPV, kind of like an oh, yeah. oversized K car, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then cool. and then you know, and then the second gen. Yeah, it is super <laughs> contradictory. But that's that's the Jazz though. It it, it the Jazz is a very contradicting car. It's like it's it's an egg, but then it feels sporty. It's like what? It's an egg. A sporty egg. <laughs> a sporty egg, right? But yeah. uh, but like seeing the evolution of what the Jazz was meant to be. So when you saw the second gen, all of a sudden super stylish, super sporty, edgy. Right, and then the third gen came out. It it was like a a tame performer. So yeah. and then to see the fourth gen, it was it was really hovering to the EV side of things. Okay, it, here's it, one for you. Mm. Um, what if let's say Honda brought back the Jazz? Would it be redundant to sell the two side by side or? I I, I think it's viable because I think there's a strong fan base. Uh, mm. For the Honda Jazz, but that that, uh, but like what we've always seen, like it remains to be seen with the actual market. Okay, well, um, when we first saw the city, which we all like, the city sedan, we thought that that was kind of that. Well, at least for me, it became my no-brainer choice for someone starter car if you could handle it, like for your kids, right? And that's what people yeah. reacted to. <clears throat> if you're looking at the city sedan versus the city hatchback for someone going off <laughs> to school let's say, someone who doesn't know cars, which would you choose for them? The hatchback I'd say the hatch- or the sedan? I'd say the hatchback. Okay, because why? It, uh, that, that, uh, that, like what Chris was mentioning a while ago, it's, it's like a baby station wagon, that active lifestyle, that when you have that versatility, you can, for like, when you're young, you're more creative or like you're exploring new things, you want that versatility of space. Now, Oh, this month I'm into surfing. Next month I'm into plants. Next month I'm into like a like a personal business. It oh. allows you to cater to all those different lifestyles. Okay. So the flex basically you're looking at uh, you want yeah. the flexibility of that yeah. rear seat system which you guys really like. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in terms of the front seats there's no difference, right? Um no. In terms and, of the drivability, in terms of the handling there's no difference. It's really it yeah, really like, comes down to Well, we were limited to Honda's test track at the time, so we we haven't actually put it through its paces yet. So in terms of oh, uh, okay. that that kind of drivability, we uh, won't be able to answer that. Chris, just, so you know. they, they, so when, when you when you left, I had like time with the car. They allowed me to use the the whole track as I pleased. <laughs> oh, okay. So and like, but yeah, so like I I drove it and. Like their small figure eight parts, their turn. I went o- to the overpass, all the stuff. I went through their when they test the suspension, how the spe- mm-hmm. suspension felt. Mm-hmm. I, at least for me, safe to say, mechanically, it really feels like the City RS, which is also a testament to how good the City RS sedan is. Okay. So basically, the, everything's the same. Basically, yeah. the suspension's the same. It, it's really just that little rear end. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's more uh, that, that ULTR seats. Uh, right. Unlike other cars, with their, like other cars, when they have a hatchback and sedan variant, it, it's, it's more of a styling choice. Mm. Okay, yeah. so you don't think it's a styling choice in this no, case? No, no. It's, okay. it's more okay. of a no, utility no, no. Good, choice. Good, good, uh, good point. Okay, so we are done. We have spent time with, well, okay, Nick's and Chris have spent time with the Honda City hatchback in 1.5 RS form, the only form it is available in now. Uh, They enjoyed it. They liked it. Uh, We all like the City sedan, and I'm sure we will like the hatchback just as much. Uh, It's apparently a little bit more flexible, a little bit more fun in terms of what you're allowed to do. So thank you very, very much, everyone, for joining us. This has been Nick. This has been Chris. This has been Paolo. This has been Francis. This has been G. I'm Carl. Thank you very, very much. Stay safe, stay well, stay healthy, and enjoy the drive. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.